This is Tauri Talk, the podcast from the Scuderia Alpha Tauri Formula One team. Check it like you can. Mega, mega race. And it's a third win of the season for Nick De Vries. Yes, yes, yes. Paradise, like traffic paradise. What is this one? Wait, what the f- is that? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tower Talk, coming to you live from the deck of our Red Bull Energy Station on the harbour of Monte Here's Carlo. Here's the sub main castle, Yuki, Yuki I, I'm going gonna, gonna to mute your microphone next time, I think. <laughs> what did you say? This is sub main castle, Yuki Tsunoda, and hearing right... I can still not understand what no, you're neither, saying, No, mate. neither can I. Should I just mute him or... <laughs> really? Subcast? No, what, what are you... Sub main caster. Main caster? Main caster. It's podcaster. Sub- okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for interrupting once again, Yuki. Welcome back to the show. Lovely podcast show. No, that's very nice of you. Nick, we also have you here. Thank you for joining us in Monaco, your home. Uh, your home, your current home, not your home city, I would say. Yeah, well, I, I kind of consider it as a home. Yeah. Um, How long have you been living here now? Uh, this is my fourth year here. Um, yeah, really enjoy living here and kind of feels my, like my home race. I'm sleeping home. Spending life here, so it's good. So, we're, like I said, we're coming to you live from our energy station, which is on the harbour in Monaco. We've got a fantastic view, so if you're going to watch on YouTube, head to Alphatari's YouTube channel and you can see it. Coming up on the show, we've got to catch up with Yuki and Nick after a long break. Yuki and Nick go head-to-head in testing their track knowledge, and we'll get the chance to air some of our grievances. So let's get into it. First, I think we do need to address the natural disaster that occurred last week that cancelled the race. Um, if you're listening to this right now, you're probably aware the region of Emilia-Romagna in Italy was hit by a catastrophic flood, um, which has claimed the lives of multiple people and left thousands of others homeless. Uh, our town of Faenza, where the team is based, was massively affected by this, and around two-thirds of the town, including the centre, was completely underwater. Uh, it's something that I've never experienced before. Now, you both have stories from this, and I think I'll start with you, you Yuki, because you live in Faenza and actually hit you at home, didn't it? Yeah, um, I was literally in Faenza and, um, well, really luckily, my house itself was okay. Um, but yeah, other parts of the Faenza, most of the Faenza, like 70% of Faenza's um, town uh, houses are um, pretty, pretty much flooded, flooded and uh, yeah, got quite a lot impacted. So, like, especially after I saw, a day after um, I saw, like, those kind of... Um, pictures or even I went I went to see in the town um, it just literally it's just unreal because I haven't did have I haven't uh, have this situation you know also experience so like it just really uh, yeah things I couldn't believe uh, at the same time was really 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 sad to see um, because you know like most of fans people I know it and you know like I think most of people people like really united, so yeah, it's just uh, really, really sad, sad things. So you said you walked through town, it was a day after, I think, when everyone was starting to clean up. And um, I remember I got a message from you saying like, you know, can I help, can I help? Which is, you know, I thought that was quite nice. Um, I was in there helping one of my friends empty his basement. Um, and I just remember saying, can you, do you have a couple of shovels in your, in your house? And you yeah. said, yeah, why? I said, yeah, please come bring the shovels. Because the entire city was just full of mud full of water, full of just rubbish of everyone cleaning out their, um, cleaning out their, their possessions because it's all destroyed. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, you, you, um, and the people saw pictures online that you were out and about helping getting rid of a lot of mud. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was good, good, good that I able to help. Also, thank you for that. Thank you for you to give me opportunity as well. But at the same time, um, I think more, every people in finance are literally helping each other, like, um, and I think they were doing much more than my my uh, job I did in on that day. Like you know, every day they have to consistently, like, uh, get out, move away the, you know, the mud from their house or you know their um, properties, and just feels like forever. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't feel actually like the mud is going away because as soon as it scoop the other kind of mud water, just uh, fill that p- pile of place that you literally scoop. So like, it just feels like forever um actually we we did quite a good job i think uh, on that day yeah, we, we did, cleaned a few streets yeah, a few streets um but still like you know literally 
whole part of our end of town was completely flooded. So it was just really lots of work requires, but at the same time, like I can tell that most of whole pe whole finds people just go out from the street and just helping each other. And I actually like when I was, you know, scooping around and uh, cleaning the town, I also heard from people in finds uh, like you know, thank you, grazie, uh, Yuki, uh, whatever. It just feel really nice mm. um, that like I feel that part of the finds people and you know able to join that com community. So yeah, it's the community just, felt a lot closer yeah, on, on really, those next days because yeah. everyone was helping each other. I mean, you know randoms coming up to you saying, do you need a hand? Because they'd finished with what they were doing and they'd come to each yeah. other people's houses saying, do you want a hand? Do you want a hand? It was, it was fantastic to see. Definitely. Just uh, I can tell like, you know, like especially like that small town, um, it's re I thought it, I expected it would be really hard to you know, recover. It took more time to recover from a lot of mud and I can see a lot of there's also like in finds there's like underground kind of roads you know like mm. uh, yeah. under you go under the tunnel or you know under the bridge so there was a lot of places that the water f filled up completely but in two days or even a day later it was completely gone um, and I think amount of people work uh, at the same time got being united how I, it was really incredible how they uh, fixed those uh, situation um, uh, yeah how fast they to remove those stuff so it's also good learning for me and like yeah it's, it feels just yeah um, good learning and uh, at the same time it's nice to see yeah and to give people context this flood happened uh, over a week ago now so it's been about eight days and the cleanup is still in full swing um, the towns are still full of mud Definitely, yeah. the rubbish is still there but what also what I found is walking through going through the town center is that at the end of the day they're all partying in the streets with drinks and with pizzas and with the barbecue, celebrating the day's work, saying, you know, we're in this together. And there's massive people around the center of Fienza, um, in front of the church, dancing. I found, I found that incredible. Yeah, it's just, you know, like, especially like that difficult situation, uh, you know, it's really hard. Like I thought, you know, every people I can tell, you know, they're just really exhausted while, you know, sweeping around and like in the daytime, but at the same time, uh, they try to enjoy as much as possible even without hard situation, uh, the things they can do, mm -hmm. you know, um, just when we when they have dinner, just you know, forget about those things and just you know, having barbecue and just uh, I think even lots of people, I guess they make friends in that time, maybe yeah. like sweeping because I like you said how um, how the people there how friendly they are, you know, if they finish the work, you just go they just go to next next place that is completely mud and just kind of help you or whatever, just like. I can tell why they, you know, they in that town in finds that they have lots of friends each other. So, yeah, so it's not really, it's, yeah, it's really nice to see. And Nick, it was a bit of a different story for you because you were on your way to Fienza for our marketing day before the race weekend as it's our home race. And it was in the evening and you were stopped. You couldn't, like, because the rain was getting quite heavy. You were stopped, I believe, on your way just outside of our town, right? Yeah, that's right. Obviously, you know, what, what, uh, my little experience doesn't weigh up to uh, everything that all the people from Fayenza had to, to go through and it was a, a real tragedy for, um, well, and it still is for the, for the local people in town. Uh, but I got to experience uh, a little bit of it and I think uh, people from outside didn't quite comprehend how uh, bad uh, it was. And um, yeah, myself, I got off the highway on the Tuesday evening um, ahead of our marketing day on the Wednesday and then I got kind of stuck between two villages because Fayenza was already flooded and I couldn't return to the highway because behind me it started flooding and they blocked the, the road so I was kind of stuck there and um, the police advised me to sleep in the car. That's incredible. That um, is, <laughs> there's no other option can you please turn around pull over and sleep in the car? Well, the, so there was one hotel between those two villages. Um, near, our, near our town, right? Yeah. Yes, it was between Fayence and Forli. Mm -hmm. I was stuck there. One of the two heaviest towns hit, it, hit I believe. Uh, I, I'm yeah. not aware no, of no, that. No, no. Okay. Yeah. But, but I was stuck there and then um, they suggested me to sleep in the car, but I was like, I'll try and find another solution. Mm -hmm. um, so I turned up at this hotel and um, by driving through or to the hotel, the water was literally already halfway up my door. Uh, in some puddles and I got to the hotel it was fully booked uh, but thankfully McLaren stranded there earlier 
So uh, they were there all in the lobby and I approached them and uh, one of the mechanics was so kind to kind of give his room to me because um, he was able to join his, his colleague. Um, so at 1 a.m. I still managed to find myself a, a bed and then the scene I, um, yeah, I, I, I saw in the, in the following morning in the lobby of the hotel was, uh, was something I've never experienced before. Like it, it literally the whole lobby turned into a shelter for people that had to escape their homes during the night. And you, you saw like uh, grandparents, children, families uh, in the lobby with blankets um, yeah, kind of laying down on sofas, people from the Red Cross, and it was just um, a, a big crisis. Um, and yeah, and then I kind of waited until 1 p.m. until uh, F1 announced the cancellation of the race, and um, and it was very tough to leave. But uh, I set a route via Firenze, um, but I hit a lot of roadblocks, and it was a yeah a long journey to get home. I got stranded again in another town. Um, but what, what, what kind of really, you, you both already touched on it, but what really kind of felt heartwarming was to see how much everyone was looking out for each other and how, how much willingness to help each other uh, people showed. That was incredible. Like I stranded in this little town. I stopped at the local bar. Uh, someone helped me to get to a hotel. The hotel was fully booked. The old lady said, don't worry. I have some beds in the church. I don't have the keys here, but I'll find them later. We have a, a kind of party here tonight. You're welcome to join. And like, they were very welcoming. So it's like Italian spirit. Yeah, <laughs> Italian spirit, yeah. very united as a family. And then the same person who brought me to the hotel had called the local mayor and he found a way to escape through Firenze, Firenze and then Florence in English. And, and that's how I eventually uh, got back home. But um, honestly, heartwarming to see how much everyone was caring for each other. So yes, as I mentioned earlier, our town as well was hit heavily by the flood disaster. So the cleanup is still going on. If you would like to help with the donations, anything helps, head to our website, alfataref1.com and follow the links there. Okay, guys, back to the pod. And it's been a long time since we've gotten one out. It's been about almost two months now. So I feel a bit bad about that. So I need to go back a little bit further between the long break after Australia and Baku. So um, we can talk about the little mini break we've had there. Um, you, you stayed out in Australia a couple of days, saw some wildlife? Yeah, after, until Tuesday, um, and yeah, we catch up uh, at Wildlife Park, it was really nice. Um, what we see? What we see? Uh, like lots kangaroos. Of kangaroos, yeah, yeah, also, yeah mo the snakes, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I felt, you know, animals, lots of, lots of animals. You weren't a fan yeah. of the emus. What's the emus? The emus ones, the ones that were walking after us. Ah uh, yes, I, I felt scary. You know, I was just <laughs> was like running away. Oh mate, I would be. Emus, uh, emus are menaces. Pants. Oh, they're, me they're menace. I was uh, feeding the kangaroo. It was really cute, but a um, muse just literally firing a mu, yeah. just uh, it, they're really big as well, mm. like bigger than me probably. They're taller than me as well. And like um, some of them, like they yeah. try to steal the you know the, the food. food. Yeah, food out of your hand. Or the friend. Oh my god. They like when they try to eat, just literally like. I don't know, like attack. punch, attack, attack. It, it, it doesn't hurt. It's just like surprising. It's just like a duck. Oh. Honestly, I yeah. would be running, <laughs> running, and not come back. You could find me on the beach, but <laughs> not there. Is yeah. it? This was in Phillip Island, so you could easily make it to the beach. Okay, <laughs> but like, or yeah. would they follow you on the beach? <sighs> I don't know. Put their head in the sand. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so, was nice, and yeah, came back to uh, Italy. So. Um, it was nice. Actually, I really like Australia. The food there is amazing. Um, I enjoyed so much that week. Uh, Japanese res restaurants there. So, yeah, it's just uh, it's just nice. Yeah. And Nick, you you're more back at home, right? Um, we saw you did the Monte Carlo Masters. That's it. I saw you met Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah, went to the AC Milan match. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. But but after Melbourne, I think I went straight to the simulator for two days, uh, yeah, and I had fun. some marketing. Uh, commitment so in the week after Melbourne was already mm. occupied and then I think I had two weeks with a little bit more uh, freedom um, and yeah I visited the AC Milan match and then uh, I also obviously well the Monte Carlo tennis is yeah. literally the a five minutes walk <laughs> for me so um, yeah I love watching 
real life sports. Yeah. So meeting Zlatan, was that a, a small, just quick meet and greet, or did you get to talk to him a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. Um, What's it, what was that like? He did not disappoint. <laughs> I mean, his aura and his charisma is just very, very present yeah. and noticeable. And he is just a big guy. And he's 41. He, you know, helped AC Milan with the uh, championship last year. And it's just just a character, just yeah. very, very strong and confident. Anything sport talked or was it just anything but? No, a little bit, a little yeah. bit of a sport chat. Yeah. yeah. Like when is it because he's injured? When yeah, is he coming yeah. back? Yeah. And how does he feel? And yeah. So would you say he's like probably one of the most famous people you've met? Uh, next to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> put him aside. <laughs> um, so yeah. who's the coolest famous person you've met? Would you put probably him there? Apart from me. Yes, I'll put him there. Yeah, yeah. At, at least, um, well, as I said, he didn't disappoint. Mm. It was like it was you see nice... him on TV and you see how big and strong he is. Yeah. And, you know, he's it's like me sending his shirt back to, um, was it James? When he came to LA and he yeah. sent him a shirt and he sent it back with his signature. Yes, and yeah. Like that kind of action. <laughs> Those stories. Or, or yeah. when he compared, or when he said, in, he qu- tried to quote him, but he said, you, I don't compare lions to humans and, like he is just very confident and in real life they're not just sayings that's actually it's him. just yeah. him yeah but but genuine yeah. you know genuine yeah yeah yuki who's the most famous person or the coolest person you've met besides nick goes um, both ways. besides me right you, you can't call you meeting yourself <laughs> um, i mean you have to live with that up i here. don't know um virgin van dyke yeah van dyke yeah. Uh, he's the, dutch yeah when did you met him it He's like, huge. He last like, year, Monza, I think. Um, because of my member, well, first of all, he's huge. Like, I, mean, I have tall, to literally, like, strong. Mm, yeah, yeah, literally yeah. look up, Defender, straight, right? yeah. straight up. Uh, like, literally, I'm watching a sky. Um, but at the same time, his personality was really, really nice. Like, he's a really, really nice guy, which I didn't expect. And, um, um, like, yeah, super, I didn't feel like... like why, why you didn't expect? Like, you think he was... No, 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 no. Like, like you know, like... I, I expected, but like, I know he was a nice guy, but I didn't expect like that much mm. nice guy. And um, he's a superstar, um, you know, like definitely I can feel aura as well, like uh, aura a lot. But at the same time, like I didn't feel like, you know, like really like superstar as, as a person as well. He's a really nice guy. And I know as an per- athlete side, he's a superstar and I can, fi- I can feel it and I can tell it. But um, as a person as well, side, it's just wonderful. So I know I'm stretching your memories a little bit, but like, what's it like starting the season for like three races and then having a break like that? Is it enjoyable or is it something you just want to get back to racing? For me, I didn't feel any issue. I, I quite like it. It's just I, I have time more to myself and um, relax it. I think so. I didn't feel any issue and no I, issues to relax. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just relax. I can eat more foods, you know, like uh, I can go around the uh, Italy, whatever, and eat food. So uh, for me, it's amazing. I think you're on the other side, Nick. You wanted to keep going. Yeah, a little bit. Like you get into a kind of rhythm um, and then and then you kind of pause again. Mm. Um, but, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy me time, um, but um, maybe not so much, not so early in the season. Also, yeah. I feel like if I have time off, I feel like I... I want to deserve that time off and and obviously that was quite early we only did three races so we only got just started um but um you know i won't say no but yeah <laughs> you know i would have preferred to continue yeah. into kind of racing rhythm yeah and on the last one on that topic did you find anything over those few weeks new tv shows new movies music oh recently not oh, not recently in, too yeah, yeah absolutely recently, uh, last chance you uh, actually last chance you yeah actually uh, michael yuki strainer uh, to, told um, uh, told me about it, mm-hmm. and it's about college football, um, and then basically, yeah, teenagers that are kind of they dropped out and they have a, a, a next chance or next opportunity to get back into Division One and, and hopefully NFL. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoy watching any series documentaries on sports, yeah. and and I find this one um, yeah cool to watch there you go last chance you on netflix i believe yes okay yeah yeah there's one on basketball as well but but like five or six seasons in last time um yeah. american football so i still have a few seasons a few to go, to go yeah. yeah before i can move to basketball yeah yuki 
I think the one you recommended to me, well, the one we watched together um, uh, in the Disney Channel. Oh, uh, yeah. Disney Plus. The, Limitless. The, the, I think so, yeah. Limitless with Chris Hemsworth. I think I've seen Amazing. This. Limitless. Yeah, like how, yeah. how good is I've, the I've changed the way I've gone away with my stuff, yeah. Remember we talked about it at, at, in Bahrain, I think, when I like I did a bit of a fast. Uh, oh, four, yes. A four-day yeah, four yeah, fast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think that was ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> no, it didn't feel Just great. thought it was a good idea to fast for four days. Like, why would you do that? Well, there's uh, apparently a good reason. I, w I just watched first uh, well, temperature, the cold temperature. Shock therapy. Shock therapy. And what was the one more time? Uh, the height, the kind of breathe control. Uh, stress control. Like. Stress control, mm. which I stress control, I think... I thought it'd be good for him. I thought it'd be good for him. Good, good for me, but... For yeah. him. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I can... I. It makes sense, and they describe, they explain well why why it's important. Even I can understand. They really talk very really specifically, and Chris, whatever uh, he will, <laughs> Chris, whatever <laughs> he's, he, he will, he will, you know, uh, make example. You know, is I, I mean, I know him. He's yeah. super famous, but uh, yeah, it's good. I think it's good this, um, episodes, yeah. and I want to definitely continue to watch that episodes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I will just say it's not just like him trying things he's he is surrounded by professional doctors and staff that are you know recommending supervising yeah yeah because it's about longevity it's like how to live a longer life longer and healthier life so they mm. it's all about research and i think it's super super interesting yeah definitely and i think so yeah, fasting I mean, you don't have for four days is, is, is enhancing the length of your life uh, it's a reset you know okay a reset <laughs> it's a reset of the system mm. I, th I'm not, I, I, I can think of what, I can think of other things to reset my system. Trust me, the sauna yeah. episode is much better. Ah, sauna. <laughs> oh, I love sauna. Everyone loves sauna. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Moving on, we get back to the racing part of it, and we're back in Baku. Um, did you guys enjoy having two races in one weekend? Two races. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's a different, completely I mean, different format, and uh, it's all sessions counts. Uh, so uh, for me, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, you're, more track bit, time. and also you're a bit used to it now because at Formula E there was kind of two sessions, like, two, like two. well, not always, but there mm. are there are quite a yeah, few double, double headers. headers. Yeah, so right. that's what yeah. I meant. And also then back in F two, we were in the season where they had two races. Uh, there was always two races, I guess. But yeah, uh, I was not in the season when they had three races. I guess that's what I was thinking of. Sorry, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, you had two races. You had a sprint and a, and a, you're right. a yeah. feature. So you're you're also both used to that. Mm. So it's something that you're kind of for, or do you prefer a structured weekend of leading up to a main event? I think a combination of both is is nice. Uh, I obviously understand that the promoter is trying to look at ways to make it more attractive for for the fans to to come and watch um, yeah the event and you know having more track action and more racing uh, or more kind of sessions that count uh, are obviously more interesting. So so I understand that um, and I think it's good that they're kind of exploring a little bit with. Um, yeah, different formats, mm. and I think the sprint events uh, contribute very well to it. But you know, six is probably a right number. I wouldn't say um, twenty-three is yeah, yeah. is uh, is is the right way to go because also it kind of devalues the main race a little bit, uh, and and it's still supposed to be you know the Grand Prix on Sunday. And then we had that long 10, 12 hour flight to to um, Miami. How did you guys adapt? After changing time zones and yeah, you know, a long long haul flight. I mean, <laughs> I think that the, the the key to jet lag is just Subway. accept it and just do it. <laughs> like like, there's no magic really. Um, you just gotta yeah. change your time zone. It keeps you busy. It's, it's as good well. to exercise in the morning. I think. Yeah. Uh, to, as, to well, it's always nice training. when you go to the west to kind of you always wake up early. You feel tired at night and you wake up early, mm -hmm. so it's good to start your day. Uh, early, but we had a busy time in Miami. Yeah, we yeah, we kept you busy. Did you have any time to yourselves? I, I think we had a little bit, but yeah, most of the time you guys made me made us uh, busy. Uh, thank you, thank you to guys, appreciate it. Um, and I had a, I didn't have much uh, time to explore around restaurants, so thanks once again. But anyway, was good. Was good so I'm sure I'm sure you managed to eat well. But also with the we got you. Racing mini jet boats. Oh yes, it was with really Daniel, nice. Daniel yeah. Cardo. Uh, with a with a shark shark sea shark in the in the sea definitely because I'm US. Um, I was really afraid with that. So terrified. Most of, <laughs> most of the time I was thinking even with I was mini boat like what if I fell, there's a shark. 
So like I tried to not fail as much as possible. Actually, the ball was really, really nice. And it was really balanced. So I did, there was almost no chance to, yeah, you, fought, you fell. But the boat was perfectly sized for me. Uh, like <laughs> literally I'm driving like order made, uh, tailored boats, which is for Daniel, like completely uh, was too small for him. But, and I think also the drag had too much and I able to, what, make him a gap in qualifying nine seconds almost. But uh, in the end, that's we dominating. Ran, he, he, that's did, dominating. he did cut a corner, I think. But. No, but yeah, in the race we had a good battle, so I enjoyed it a yeah. lot. Yeah. And uh, I was really, really to be honest, in yeah. background story, there's a bit of a uh, lot of uh, reliability issue. Oh yeah, but, uh, a, yeah, just like the engine. But on still, the, on the uh, no, we, we got it done. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. We managed to uh, we managed to film properly, and uh, a super yeah. enjoyable boat. So. It's part of the Red Bull Unseries race series, and you can find it on the Red Bull YouTube channel. I think next step, next step, we should uh, put a jump. Mm. Well, let's say I know jump. what I know what the next step is. Yeah, we should do that, like jump. I get uh, step with the jump there. And yeah, but the mate, you would need a jet engine because it's a mini jet on there. Oh, it's a mini like, jet. It's really fast. Okay. Yeah, apparently, yeah. that engine is like forty-five years old or something yeah, like that. Okay. It's crazy, and yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. And Nick, it was your first time racing in Miami. What did you think of it? I think it was a great event. Um, the Americans really know how to put on a show, and they really know how to kind of entertain mm -hmm. around sports. Um, I had some local friends over there uh, who I know from, from here, from uh, Monaco. Um, so I, I had most evenings dinner dinner with them, which was really nice to spend some time with, uh, with him and his girlfriend. And yeah, then the event was just very cool. I think they, they, um, they definitely made a big step from, from last year. I was there uh, present for mm -hmm. uh, test reserve driver duties. And, um, like the paddock was in a completely different area and everything was slightly different structured, but um, very enjoyable event. And it wouldn't be one of our regular podcasts if we, you touched on it before, Yuki, t talking about food. What if either of you had in the past Should two I like check out now? Yeah, you can, you can have a break. I, can check I think out, we can, yeah. we can, we're, we're set for a while. Mm. <laughs> well, like I had a um, Joe's Crab in the Miami. Ba Bagu. Joe's Crab. No, no, usually he starts with uh, Wagyu. I always starts with Wagyu, uh, even yeah. the fan forums. Oh, yeah. yeah, had good beef, good Wagyu. No, no, no. I always adapt with each country's food. So, like, you know, if it's Miami, I think it's more famous to, I guess, crab, I don't know. but Smoked meat. Just stone crab. Stone crab was amazing there. Um, yeah, we went. To, I went with the Michael and the two, two colleagues from Afatari, including you. Um, and uh, it was really, really nice. Um, I don't know why, but I was so gr grumpy at that night, so I was not really in a good company, so apologies for that. But uh, yeah, so still the, the food itself was really, really nice. And um, after that, had uh, on the rest day, whatever, we had uh, another dinner, I think. Oh yeah, Nobu. Yeah. Went to Nobu. Yeah, Nobu. And met Nobu himself. Yeah, it's uh, Nobu, uh, we met the first time in Dubai at the beginning of the season um, in the party, the opening ceremony in Dubai and uh, we became uh, good friends and he invited me to the Nobu Miami and he was there and we had lots of chat at that point and I, I, I talk, we talked about how he's passionate the food and how he built the Nobu brand uh, until now and like it's, it's quite similar how he's thinking uh, maybe it's a little bit, you know, obviously he's much more professional, but like to, when, we, when I open the restaurant, I have a bit of <laughs> idea from, I can definitely steal the idea from him, how, how he <laughs> made a good restaurant until then. So like, basically he stole your <laughs> ideas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, my father's name is Nobu, Nobuaki, so he's Nobu. So, you know, maybe, uh, I I'm get, sorry that's taken. You need to start, try something else. You can, you can start a friend size. A f take a franchise, yeah, and, franchise and go into business with him. Maybe, yeah. And that First one could be that subsection Nobuyuki. I'll be a um, how do you say it? Like I'll be students of him. Yeah, uh, I get the, he's an apprentice. Yeah, but he's really such a nice guy and a really lovely, lovely person. Uh, I super enjoyed that night. So yeah, those are the two meals, or well, mainly I can talk about in Miami. Cool. Nick doesn't have to be in Miami, by the way. Oh yeah. Okay. Food. No, sorry, you've had your turn, Yuki. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoy food. Uh, I like going to nice places. Um, also enjoy cooking at home. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're always going out for dinner. We're always, you know, traveling True. and eating outside home. So when I'm home, I actually enjoy uh, cooking myself. So what's your main dish? What's your signature dish if you're bringing people over and say, guys, I've got cooking done covered tonight? Um... 
I would say sweet potato salad. Nice. So salad, sweet yeah. Nice. yeah. Anything on the side? Oh yeah, Follow it's it up. Not, not, not just green leaves and <laughs> sweet potato, but um, red onions, tomatoes, feta cheese, oh. pesto, yeah. chicken. You can be on the track as well if you want. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be averse cheese. to that. No. <laughs> I mean, I kinda, just I, there. I kind of stole the recipe from the gym, partly, um, but I, I call it my own. Yeah. 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 All you need to do is just edit the recipe a little bit and then yeah, just change it a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Nick, do you have any bad habits? Anything at all? Could be biting your nails, could be like on the phone too much or whatever. Do you have anything? It's not, I'm not trying to trap you at all. I've got something coming up after this, but do you have anything? Um, I think I have many bad habits. Just one. Just one? Yeah. I mean, I'm, nobody's perfect and, and I'm course. far from, so um, I would say I'm too much on my phone. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of us are like I think we're guilty of that, absolutely. Of addicted. So the reason I ask that is that over the weekend, Yuki decided he wanted to start a game to address his, oh, well, okay, well yeah. our bad habits, which is swearing. Ah. Which I was really good at this well, game. Well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it was very <laughs> simple. Each swear word cost you five euros. Okay. Yeah, and that was the day. So the aim is to watch what you say, to limit the profanity. Um, and it made it more difficult because we we're doing stuff like assembling a TV or like going to like the gym or something. And it's just like it, it, places that are very easy to swear. Um, it's a good exercise to help control emotion because even the following days after that, I was really watching what I say every, every time I wanted to say something. It was like, oh, wait, am I going to pay for this? Or Over two days, would you like to guess Yuki's total bill? <laughs> Where was this? It was just around home, just in fines and stuff. Home. Yeah, so we're just doing a couple of things. We might have gone for lunch. We might have gone to. And as you him. know, I'm I don't swear much in the only maybe in the car. I don't swear much in outside of outside of car. So as you know, I'm I will be good at this game. Guess what? How much? Two hundred euros. Oh, I would love to say yes, but no, it was actually lower. Okay. So he, he was like surprisingly Sorry. quite well behaved. Okay. So the first day it was forty five euros. Really? Yeah. Second day was 55, so he went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will point out, and then we played it one more day after that, but all three days, within 30 seconds, he had, ru- he had broken the rules. So, so actually, my guess was very accurate, because if he was, very, uh, yeah, yeah. If he was very conscious of it, yeah. that means that in normal life, he would at least double it. <laughs> yeah. I hate this game. It's your game. I know, I created it by myself, but yeah, just... Yeah, uh, it was fantastic. He, he said the game, we're well, having breakfast or something. I said, you know, okay, fine. I, I think thought- you should, should go gaming and then oh. play that game. That would be caching. Yeah. Caching. Yeah. I'll but I think you'll be swearing but the like, whole way through. Like, like you said, just incredible. Like last, every time I say something every thir- within 30 seconds after we started. So. Yeah. All three days, within 30 seconds, he'd sworn. Like, even within I'm 30 not seconds. Trying, like just re. Yeah. I don't know why. It was brilliant. I loved it. I mean, one, one I provoked you. I left the car door open and walked away. The first, yeah, first one was like 30 seconds. And second time, I knew it's going to be a, you know, I have to, I said to myself, remind myself, I have to be careful. And it was one minute and a half, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. And um, I mean, look, I'm not without sin. I did rack up a little bit as well, but um, it was a good exercise. You really have to think you want to swear. Five euro is not, not uh, cheap. So. It's not cheap. It does add up. So yeah. Speaking of games, it's time to play a game of our own. Oof. You may have played this game before, or at least seen it attempted, but uh, it's very simple. You're going to guess the circuit based only on the audio of an F1 car. Easy. Easy? Oh, okay. We've got two new actions here. Nick's going, oh, well, wait. And Yuki's quite confident, so I'm going to see how this plays out. Always start with confidence. Why not? I'll play each of you an onboard audio of a pole position lap from a random track that has been on the calendar last year. And you have to guess it only using sound from the video. And okay. I'm not going to throw any curveballs that like you've never driven or whatever. Like it's it's all it's all yeah. above board here. Okay, because you know I I know I probably know only 11 or 12 tracks on the calendar. That's fine. We've only got five. Okay. So from five races. <laughs> Hopefully the ones five. I know. So from last five races. Yeah. Mean. No, not from the last. No, no. not necessarily. No, yeah, I mean exactly. there are more tracks. I know. Absolutely, I know yeah. Monza. Yeah, absolutely. So okay. that'd be. Yep. So we'll start with the first one, and all you have to do is we don't have a buzzer here, unfortunately. But um, if you know it, just shout out the, the okay. track. The track, okay? Yep. Netherlands. And no, you can't just say 
track. <laughs> <laughs> rule number one is you can't just say track. I like your right. rule number one. Jason says some style. Yeah. Rule number one. Always Jason. Um, yeah. yeah, you can't just shout, shout out tracks that you think it might be. Just try and My pick man. the right one. Because I'm, I'm looking at you, Yuki. I feel like it's something you would do. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got the first one here. Lots bumpy. Really bumpy. Long straight. Ooh. Bahrain. Oh, oh shit. I was that's there. amazing. Yeah, that's... Guys, oh, yeah. That well is done. fantastic. Well done. I'm really impressed with that. That's, that's really good. So, yes, Yuki, you got that well, one. Real fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, well done. <laughs> that was the worst high five I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> what do you mean? We can't reach each other. I know, such a touch. I know it, was, it was really... It was not really Guys, good. go on the YouTube channel, watch that. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Jetta? Nope. Oh no, it's too slow to end one thing too. Am I still allowed to participate? Yep. Oh my god, no idea. I would have thought that one gave it away. Monaco! Bangs! Oh. Well done. <laughs> Sorry, oh, the yeah. home track. And <laughs> wait, wait, you said that, home track. No. Yeah, I said just then. I said bang, like home track. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, but after he guessed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He didn't no, give no. anything. Oh, right? no, I didn't get, no. I, no, I said I thought that gave it like the really, the really slow. Uh, okay. Yep. Whew. Okay. It's good. Not bad. I'm, well done. Yeah. Told ya. Confidence. Okay. Ready for the third one? Ready for the third one. Silverstone. Bang! Woo. Fantastic. That was quick. Really? I I didn't expect that at all. Yeah. Good yeah. job. What gave that one how, away? How, how do you how do you know it's Silverstone? I haven't been there, but I just thought like turn one, turn two is flat, and then small acceleration out of three, and then a back downshift. So I, yeah. I can tell the sounds goes a little bit lower, so I thought it's just a K clip, the you know like clip. Okay, uh, no, I just, thought it was more than that. Did you have battery. something in your mind that yeah, you thought, what was it? So I thought it's much longer stray, which was like Monza or which is, you know, you, you can't just have full battery um, into the turn one. So I thought it's just K-clip. I didn't, I, I, you know, normally when you turn flat, like Silverstone, it will also, the engine sound will go low, but I didn't expect that guy was turning. So, well played. So it's 2-1, game's still on. It's out of five. I should have said this is best out of five. Okay. Yeah. Fourth track. Baku. Bang. I Two all. I, I know it. Diama. Yeah, I, I, I had it. the same feeling with Bahrain. <laughs> I was like, for f Sake. I knew this and <laughs> five that's euro, too slow. Five five euro. Euro. Oh yeah. Five euro. Not easy, is it? No, not easy. Especially when you like you like you said, when you're playing games, it's mm -hmm. such right. high stakes. This is for the win, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for that, Yuhi. Ready? Okay, last one. I'm lost. I'd love to give you a hint, but I'm, I really want this to be a fair game. Barcelona. Bang! Really? Oh. Well done. Oh. I, I could not think it was that quick. Yeah. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Do you. Do you want to play just for a lot? I do have one more, a bonus one. We just say, yeah, you, you win because it was best out of five. But okay. the last bonus one is a tough one, though. A very tough yeah, one. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, last one. Let's go. Just go the ahead. bonus points. <laughs> a track I know. Neither. 
Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just picked a hard one. Probably not. You were there as a reserve, I think. Qatar. <laughs> Well done. Whoa! Did I? What? 3-3. <laughs> three, three. Yeah. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, How I'll do you know that. the Qatar? Did I give it away with maybe you don't know it and maybe you were there as a reserve? Did I give it, you a hint there? No. Are you sure? No. Are you okay. sure? No. I wasn't even present. Oh, really? It's two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mate, I, it's I, two years ago. I feel, I feel, you know, I mean, I still win. I still win. It's, no, it's first three five. Three. No, it's first five. This is bonus. <laughs> well, like, first so five. I took the bonus. First five. Yeah. I took the bonus. Bonus points. Is this bonus is like exhibition? You know what? I'm gonna Actually, say, usually, that bonus gives heat. more points. No, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What the? So I'm gonna yeah. say, I said, look, I did say on before I said, Yuki, you win the official game, but I'm I gonna call that a, de a dead heat because that was a really, really good last. Okay, I give that. Hail Mary, mm. as they say in the American sports. Okay. All right. Cool. So, I think um, this is a pretty open space but we can, you know, bring it's anything It's a very here. open space. Yeah. <laughs> Look around you. Literally and figuratively. Um, but we can talk about anything that's on our mind. So with that in mind, I want to bring something else, a new segment um, um, to the show, which is called... The airing of grievances. So in case you didn't hear it, it's an airing of grievances. Yeah. Okay. So you, anything, if you've got anything on your mind to get off your chest, no matter how big or small, what annoys you, what gets under your skin, mm -hmm. Bring it, bring it out now. I want to know what, what something that gets on your skin. For example, mine always comes from flying. And you know, lucky I don't fly enough. People reclining on their seats during food service. Don't need to do it. I need to eat. People rushing off the plane as soon as it touches down. Yeah, true. Can't stand it. People rushing onto the plane when the, they're not even on their boarding group. I'm, I'm the opposite. I can't stand people that are slow. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> like seriously just get on with it like we are traveling from A to B and I groups. want to do that but there are groups there are rules to follow True. not everyone just yeah. rushes like a funnel and then no one goes anywhere no that's that's fair that's yeah fair. so and I'm just sitting there going like look I'm going in my group and you're trying to skip ahead which means you're getting on earlier mm. and stopping mm. the traffic flow because Agreed. you're yeah no, but you still gotta be mannered and, oh, and follow the rules yeah, but, yeah. but just being slow you know, people. Yeah, okay, that's your. So, this is your one then, essentially. Yours is just like people who are just like slow in everyday things. Which I am, actually. But uh, when it comes to traveling, I just want to move. Yeah. Okay. So, Yuki, what gets under your skin? Mm. What's it like a. It, does, it doesn't have to be travel. That was just like my example. It can be anything. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it really much, to be honest. I have to think about it. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> I mean, you are known to swear, so that means anything can get under your skin quickly. Um, maybe not. I I don't know. I have maybe a lot, but what? Yeah, are we talking about airports? Maybe you know people just standing around the belt conveyor, you know, waiting for luggage. Ah, uh, too close. It's too close. The yeah. belt. I mean. Everyone have to wait. There's a line at least. Every, most of airport they have line to, to wait. Don't go more than this line, so everyone can see. It, you know, like, what's the point waiting right next to belt compare even though your luggage is, is not coming? It's like, mm, you know, sometimes I cannot see because my height, which is a bit <laughs> unfortunate, but like, you know, you know, even like my height people have to see the luggage whether it's coming or not. So that's maybe things I can tell for now. About airport, yeah. So public service announcement. If you're traveling, give some space around the conveyor belt. Exactly. Your bags I mean, are like, coming first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so only that one for now, the airport. To keep on the topic of travel, what are your thoughts on bringing smelly foods onto the plane? Would you do it? No, but I, I haven't had exper experience much. Really? Yeah. You haven't experienced? Oh, yeah. Maybe traveling business and stuff, you know, at the front. People. No, we. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. Not really true, but no, no. Um, for sure, we all started I have, somewhere. I, I haven't experienced it either. Yeah. I had one on the way back from Miami. Literally. Okay. What were you? No, that no, was it. Wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> I was no. sitting there, and two rows across, some woman. I mean, fair play, kind of just made me jealous. She bought a full pizza onto the plane, Oof. pepperoni, everything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh la la, a full pizza. Yeah. If she would share, I mean. Is that a sharing rule? Like, do you share no. with people in, in your row? Hey, look, I've got a full, <laughs> yeah, got that's a full a lot. pizza. No, I just lift it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. I would say. But well, I don't know. It's just real. Has anything come, nothing's come to your mind. It's just bouncing off the travel stuff. Well, in yeah. restaurants, when you have to wait very long for your food. 
Yeah. In, in Miami at breakfast one morning, I, w- I walked into the kitchen. I just thought like, really? seriously. Yeah, I walked into the kitchen. I said, guys, to make an acai, it's literally taking acai in a bowl and then adding it. The fruit is already cut. It shouldn't take longer than five to 10 minutes. And I waited like an hour. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so what I'm learning here is apparently Yuki's the most chill Zen guy in in, in the paddock. No, I'm not Zen. Definitely, <laughs> I want to be Zen, but I don't know. Just okay. maybe I have. I not, think you're not too honest, much. man. I have too much. So, but I can, I, I really, literally can't think about anything for now. All right, you got angry at me once for taking. We're in a canteen. Not once. I've seen him getting angry at you multiple times. The one in Melbourne was outrageous. Oh. Like. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I don't like much the people late. So it's finally coming. If you gave me the thing story, yeah, if you mentioned, yeah, I don't like much people being late. Um, um, I can mention another one. What? But go on, yeah, go you on. Can, you can say it. <laughs> okay, no, go on, finish this one. And I'll I mean, like, next. come on, respect the time. It's normal thing. And, you know, that's it. So if you mention like that, I'll, I can have lots of things, baby. But yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the only thing I wanted to say was when the time that you got mad at me is when we we're staying in the canteen, and there was like you know grapes or fruit and fries on my plate, and before paying, I took one fry and ate it, and he got wait, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, Where, oh, I'm gonna that? pay it at um, the lunch that we normally go to in. Okay. The, um, and I'm on, I want to know: is that okay? Can you take a, a grape off your plate? Can you take a fry off your plate before paying for it? Is that a good thing or not? Is, is it like illegal to to? No, eat? no. You, you had a you had a strong view on that. You said no, no. You have to pay for it, and then you eat it. I said, yeah. I'm I mean, gonna pay for it anyway. Well, well I didn't. I didn't get like that much. Oh right? no, no, you Airport. didn't. No, no. I'm just saying that you you picked me up on it. Okay, interesting. Yeah. But it's, but I th- I feel like it's better to like sit down, yep. and properly and eat it. You know, like yeah. to also something. But anyway. It was not like that much. But Melbourne, I was, yeah. I was also in a not good mood from like beginning onwards in the morning, so I don't know. It's a morning. Yeah. Jet lag. Anyway, um, but other stuff, do, do you have anything on my, my, my mind that do you have in your mind? That no, I've no, no, no. Like I, had, I just had the grapes and fries picking at the canteen. Mm. <laughs> that was Nick's one. What was the other one you want? Uh, in Baku for the fan forum, Yuki got upset too. Was um, I? Yeah. Was I? Well, I think I was also a little bit late, and but Pierre is always late. Like I think that yeah. he's, I think he's scarred from Pierre and having to wait around for three years. But I'm sure you didn't react the same way with Pierre. No, as I was. Me. He no, did. I was. He got he got snooty with him, and then Pierre would always. You know how there's always pictures of Pierre and like Nuki with his arm around him. Mm-hmm. That's him comforting him, saying, "Oh, come on, don't be so bad." Like okay. it's not him just like it's that always was so that. Mad. Yeah, I just find it funny. It's not funny. Being <laughs> late is not funny. No, but the way you react, it's just like... So now, now we know, Yuki, we do the swear game, so there's no swearing, but also no reaction. I don't know if people agree with this, but like being late, I mean... No, 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 definitely you're late. How no, no, the no. F, how the <laughs> F, you know, like the people who are being late cannot say anything, you know, like mm. just no, no, keep no. continuing late. Just sometimes show up in their own time, like, you know, show some respect. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Does it feel good to get things off your chest? Maybe because of Japanese culture, you know, especially train comes always on the time. I mean, you, so you, like, you live in Italy. Like, basically, when you have a meeting there, it's always 10 minutes late. <laughs> I mean, you know, being, so minutes being late, on finish, time 20 minutes or being late. late is always yeah. being on time is much better feeling, yeah. right? Any, with anything. So, mm-hmm. anyway. I thought that was fun, <laughs> getting everything off your chest. It was just meant uh, to be good, the small good. little things. I like things. this. I yeah. like this. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, that's all the time that we have for today's show. Yuki and Nick, thank you a lot for coming in and giving a lot of a lot of your time. I mean, we've we could have worse places to do this, I think. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So it's nice. I like the different kind of uh, atmosphere to you know not only just indoor in podcasting. Well, normally you have to do it indoor because it's really quiet in yeah. the podcast. But I thought you know what, this is a nice place. Nice it's a special quiet. one. Yeah, a special one. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like this edition. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming in early. I asked you in early too, so appreciate that. Thank you very much. All good. So we've got plenty of plenty coming up on the pod in the coming weeks. We have episodes with our drivers, trainers, Piri and Michael, a motorsport photography episode and lots more. So make sure you subscribe to Tarot Talk on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. That way you'll get all the episodes as they drop. Until next time, it's bye for now. Bye.